Hello everybody, welcome back to week 12 of our graduate statistics course. This is our video lecture 2. We've been discussing and introducing ourselves slowly to the analysis of correlation between two variables. The problem we've been exploring, uh, that we've been examining, is the relationship between the percentage of uh, high school gradu graduates in a particular location and the percentage of poverty, or the amount of poverty, in that particular location. And we've seen, based on this descriptive data, this scatter plot, that there is a negative relationship between the two, meaning that locations with a lower um, number of graduates will be related to higher poverty than in locations with um, a smaller percentage of high school graduates. And we started to understand that correlations have to be characterized by its strength and its direction, right? And we saw that the direction here is, a, is an inverse relationship that we just described. When one goes up, the other goes down. Um, and the scatter plot suggests that we have a moderate uh, correlation coefficient. So out of these, we decided that this would be a good guess. And then if you think, but well, why not 0 0.6? 0 0.6, still moderate. It's true. If both of them were negative, I would be like, I can't decide just with my eye between 0 0.6 and 0.75. But because the relationship is inverse and negative, a positive coefficient is kind of out of the question, right? But for sure, and I'm, if I'm looking at a cloud of data like this, I don't know exactly what R is. I know that it will be potentially somewhere between 0.6 and 0.8 looking at this graph, but we don't need to guess, okay? I like to train my eyes a little bit uh, when I'm looking at these plots to have a sense of what the data looks like, but we can actually compute R, right? And I told you how to do that, right? Uh, we have a formula for it. And I told you that you don't need to learn how to actually compute this because we'll have a function in, in the R software that we use to compute the R statistic. But note this, that what we want to know when we do correlation analysis, what we're trying to do is to figure out something that is unknown, which is the correlation between two variables in the population of interest. In the case of this particular problem, we want to know what the correlation is between high school graduation and poverty in the United States, the whole United States, right? But we don't have access to all of the data in every single county everywhere. So we have some we have a sample of that data, sample of that population. But what we want to know is the correlation between variables in the population. So we want to know rho, which is our the name for the parameter that we want to know the true value of the correlation in the population. But as I said, because we can't have access to that, that's unknown, we do research. We get a sample. We look at sample data and we compute R, which is the correlation between variables in a sample, hopefully representative sample of that population. So while rho, or this Greek thing that looks like P, so I'm using rho not to confuse with the P of the probability of the null hypothesis, the probability of data under the null hypothesis, um, I'm gonna say rho for our parameter, right? It's just like with the mean that mu is the parameter and x bar is the sample statistic, the mean of the sample. Here is kind of the same logic. We have a, a letter, a Greek letter, to represent uh, what we want to know in the population, which is the correlation in the population, the true correlation. But we get data, a sample from the population, and we can compute the correlation between two variables in that sample, and we'll call that correlation R. So R is a statistic an estimate of what we want to know. Now, because it is an estimate, because it is an, because it is an a statistic, it's subject to sampling error, just like the mean, just like the difference between means, right? Just like the expected minus observed counts, right? We know that if we sample multiple times, we're never gonna get exactly the same thing, right? If the, correlate, the true correlation is zero in the population, if I sample, it doesn't mean that I'll get exactly zero every time, right? So how much, um, how can I know that what I'm seeing, the correlation that I'm looking at, 
is large enough for me to dismiss the hypothesis that rho is zero, the null hypothesis, right? So just like we've done for other types of problems, as I said, it's the same logic every single time, same process every single time. We need, just like as we did, to assess if the difference between means in a sample is large enough for us to conclude that it's different from zero in the population, right? We need inferential statistics here to know whether the estimated correlation coefficient r is large enough for us to dismiss the hypothesis that the correlation in the population, which is what we want to know, rho, is zero, okay? I promised you at the beginning of the course that I wanted you to understand, primarily understand the process behind statistical testing and that it is not, it does not change every time we change a test, right? The nuts and bolts might change, but the process is the same, right? We want to know something about the population. We get some sample data. We measure some statistic there. We get an estimate there and we have to determine if that estimate is large enough for us to say, hmm, it's deviating enough from zero for me to say, I will dismiss the null hypothesis that nothing is going on. All right, same thing. So what's the null hypothesis in this case? Is that rho equals to zero. There is no correlation between response variable and explanatory or predictor variable in the population of interest. The alternative is that rho is different from zero, that there is a significant correlation between response variable and explanatory variable in the population of interest. In the context of correlation and regression, we talk a lot about predictor variables, and that's the same as explanatory variable. All right, so we need to know, in order to test that hypothesis, how is R distributed, right? under the null hypothesis that there is nothing going on. What is the expectation? If I sample over and over again from the population, how much variation around zero would I expect if there is no correlation, right? What are typical values? What are likely values? What are large enough values? What is the distribution that I need to look at? So the distribution is not the distribution of R itself. We need to compute a T score from the R values that we got. We need to do a transformation because R is bounded between negative one and one, so it doesn't conform nicely to any um, st you know, uh, standardized statistical distribution. But there is a transformation that we can do to go from R and weighing that R value with uh, the number of people in the sample and getting a T score to check it against a T distribution, okay? It is important to note that and remind you that T distributions have one parameter, degrees of freedom, right? The thickness of the tails reduce the more degrees of freedom I have, the more people in the sample I have, right? And it looks more and more like the normal distribution the more people I have in the sample. And the way we compute degrees of freedom, we pick the degrees of freedom is the number of people in the sample, the number of units in the sample. Here is not people, it's states, but the number of units in the sample, sample size, minus two. Um, you, again, won't have to compute this, this statistic, but when you do correlation analysis, you see that it will spit out an R, which is an estimate of rho. It will tell you that there is a T computed from it. It will tell you the degrees of freedom. And it will tell you a p-value that we will compute because we're going to compare, oh, let's say I got a t between 0 and 1. Is that large enough for me to dismiss the null hypothesis, right? What's the probability of me getting that particular t-value or larger? If the probability is less than 0 0.05, what do we do? We reject the null in favor of the alternative. If the probability of finding that particular statistic or larger is less than 0 0.05, then we'll say, we'll keep the null. It's kind of likely to see that value of t that I computed from the r I got under the hypothesis that in the population, there is no correlation. So I'll keep it. I'll keep the null. All right, same logic. So we'll practice doing this in the lab. Um, 
But before we do that, we are going to work a little bit on a second piece of this class, which is regression analysis. It's a bit of an extension of what a correlation analysis does. It gives us more information about the relationship. We'll talk about that when we come back. Um, so I'll see you then. Bye-bye.